please go to the town or school department website, navigate to the school board section, and click on the email link to send your thoughts to us. The school board's goals for the 2020-2021 budget are, number one, maintain and improve the high quality of education for every student. Number two, careful examination of line items and consideration of the success and effectiveness of expenditures in order to provide a fiscally responsible budget. Number three, support the 2020 through 2025 strategic plan goals. Number four, clear and continual communication throughout the budget process. With regard to goal one, the continued excellence of our schools is a great advantage to our community and a point of pride in Cape Elizabeth. This commitment to outstanding education is evident in our Blue Ribbon Awards and state and national rankings. Thus, the singular purpose of each item in our budget is the continued or improved quality of education for our students. The next goal, each line item must be scrutinized to understand how and why it is contributing to student success in concert with its impact to the budget. <clears throat> Budget goal three highlights our broad community and school department priorities for the next five years. Our current strategic plan goals were adopted in the fall of 2019 following a community forum of over 100 people called the Future Surge, which included community members, parents, faculty, staff, students, administrators, and board members. The thoughts, aspirations, and concerns from the large gathering were distilled into these goals. So yes, we have goals within goals. So these are our strategic plan goals. Number one, health and well-being. Our schools will provide a supportive learning environment in which physical, social, and emotional well-being are valued and promoted. Goal two, global competency. Our students will be personally responsible, aware, empathetic, and engaged local and global citizens. Goal three, multiple pathways and definitions of success. Our schools will value, promote, and celebrate multiple pathways and definitions of success. Goal four, safe, sustainable, and effective facilities. Our schools will be safe and effective facilities. They will be updated and maintained to meet the needs of students and staff in accordance with long-term financial planning. And finally, environmental responsibility. The school department will prioritize environmental responsibility, including stewardship and sustainability. So finally, if we go back to our budget goals, in order for all stakeholders to understand and be a part of this school budget process, therefore giving it the robust review and input that it deserves. The, the superintendent and school board must communicate clearly and often throughout the process. We will hold these goals in mind as we examine each cost center, each department, each school, and each program. As we move through every step of this process, we must also keep in mind the ongoing building committee conversation about the necessary improvements to and possible replacement of our buildings. Now a little recap. At the end of January, each of our administrators and directors gave an overview of his or her department or school, which included cost center information, staff and program reviews, and new staff or program proposals. At our second workshop, business manager Marcy Weeks gave us an ED279 or state subsidy update, and then we began hearing answers to previously submitted questions. Over the next two weeks, we finished the first round of questions and answers, took a deep look at enrollment and staffing, discussed the use of the health uh, and the health of the unassigned or undesignated fund balance, and gave guidance to the superintendent on revised budget options. The board asked for three scenarios, spending increases of 6%, 5.5%, and 5%. Those scenarios were revisions from the original request budget that was approximately, um, help me out Donna, 7.9 original request. Okay, in that neighborhood. Uh, there was, let's see here. So um, at our last meeting, those three budget scenarios were presented along with their increased or decreased staffing and programming. There was deep discussion about which scenario met our goals before the board agreed that a roughly 6% spending increase would meet our goals. Tonight we'll get the final piece of the puzzle, 
when we hear the update on our health insurance premium increase. We will receive updates to our revenues and expenditures and clarify any outstanding questions. The board will then take a straw poll to move the budget in, onto the April 14th business meeting agenda for adoption. And I would also like to note that the school board and superintendent have received many emails about the position of volunteer coordinator and extended learning opportunities coordinator. We appreciate the time people are taking to write to us and share their thoughts. I myself am gratified to hear about the many outstanding experiences students have had. The board echoes this enthusiasm for extended learning opportunities. While the school board chair and superintendent are responding to every email in order to thank people for reaching out to us, as well as to clarify some misinformation, we expect to further clarify intentions and information here tonight. Just to be clear, maintaining and expanding extended learning opportunities has been and continues to be a high priority for the school board. That program and all it encompasses, from mentor relationships to student-driven learning, is the cornerstone of strategic plan goal three, multiple pathways and definitions of success. So at this time, I wanted to pause for school board chair, Heather Altenberg. Okay, so I too would like to welcome everyone and say how nice it is to see you here. Um, typically at this point of the meeting after Elizabeth in a budget workshop does her introduction and speaks to what we have done thus far, we have public comment and I just wanted to reiterate what she had said that we've heard from many people in the community. We've received many emails about a certain position that uh, is in the budget and we have responded superintendent wolfram and myself to most of them some keep coming in and so we haven't gotten to all but we will um, and they are all around the extended learning opportunity uh, coordinator position the volunteer and extended learning opportunity coordinator position and some are questioning the the board status on or opinion on the value of those programs and I just want to reiterate and say how important volunteering and ELO are in our um, in our in our goals we have made it one of the goals for um, extended learning to be a valuable value part of the experience in multiple pathways so the board highly values these programs um, and they were never in consideration of being cut um, if you are invested in this, I encourage you to stay throughout the meeting and hear the conversations that happen around that. As we head into public comment, I just wanna reiterate some of the sort of ground rules that come with public comment. We have a policy and uh, I just wanna read through some of the points that um, are important to adhere by. One is that citizens, employees, students and others with a legitimate interest in the board's business is welcome to participate as provided by the in the policy Two, it's the orderly conduct of a meeting does not permit spontaneous discussion from the audience speakers are to identify themselves by name before they begin speaking before they begin speaking and to direct their comments and questions to the board chairperson in this case we're going to say to elizabeth because she is the one running the meeting please efficient use of meeting time groups or organize designate a spokesperson to present their comments there's are also requested to avoid duplication repetition of remarks made by others and so i come at this point i want to pause and say that um i'm seeing that there are quite a few people on this zoom call and I think that's wonderful. I think coming in and having your voice heard is very important. Um, and I, I just wanna reiterate that we are reading the emails. We are taking them into consideration. They, they are being heard. Your voices are being heard. What this is referring to is hopefully not messages over and over again in this meeting and that a spokesperson can go ahead and, and share the sentence. Um, 
the board chair has a, to limit the time allotted for comments on a particular topic as well as the time each individual may speak. And typically we've done three minutes per person. Um, and typically it's about 15 minutes, but um, if there's an outpouring, I see people's voices to be squashed. So if it goes to 20 minutes, we can decide as a board if we want to extend that time period and let it be heard. Uh, gossip, defamatory comments, and abusive, vulgar, or threatening language are not permitted. The board chairperson has the prerogative to stop any presentation which violates this rule or which would violate the privacy interests of any individual. Complaints concerning individual students or employees will not be aired in public at board meetings, but they will, refer, be, will, will be referred to the administration for resolution as appropriate. And then finally, employees and employee groups may not discuss matters at board meetings for which there's more appropriate forms are provided by law or contract and in that case it's that we're really not meant to speak about particular people we can talk about programs and positions am i correct on that donna and elizabeth oh everybody is frozen to me that's my understanding Heather. That's, that's correct okay so we're here to listen to you about programs and what's on the budget. And so that being said, um, I think I, I would just like you to remind you, if you do want to comment, uh, say your name and address um, and your address where you live. If you're not speaking, please mute. If you would like to speak throughout the, this period of commenting, raise your hand and Elizabeth will call on you. And I think that's all that I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. So at this time, the floor is open to any members of the public that wish to speak. Please click on your raise hand button. And once I call on you, unmute yourself so we may hear you. And please identify yourself before you begin speaking. I'm sorry, I don't see my raised hand button, but I'm raising my hand. Okay. <laughs> that counts, John. Yep. I call on you. Um, let's see. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I prepared a statement to read to you. Uh, hi, my name is John Holdridge. I live at 2 Glen Ave. For the past five years, I've served in the full-time position of volunteer and extended learning opportunities coordinator for Cape Elizabeth Schools. I want to start by thanking all of the parents, community members, staff, and students who have shared kind words about my work and about the value of the full-time position I hold. In particular, I want to thank the students and alumni and to let you know how proud I am of you for taking charge of shaping your education and for letting your voice be heard. You have unequivocally made clear the importance of relationships and your desire for extended learning opportunities to be a part of a well-rounded education. I hope you will always find ways to share what you believe you are the present and the future. There seems to be some confusion about my position cut, so I want to make sure to share the information that I've received. On Monday, March 23rd, I received a heads up call from Jeff Shedd alerting me to the several levels of budget cuts that were being considered and that it looked like my full time position was in line to be cut. He noted there might be a new part time position that I could apply for. On Monday, April 6th, the high school staff received our weekly Monday morning message from Jeff Shedd that stated, and I quote, the superintendent has indicated that the volunteer coordinator role can be absorbed into the business office next year. That has led to a rethink of a part-time teacher leader position, which was already in the budget proposal to make the remaining ELO part of that role, a teacher function. This would be in conjunction with the elimination of the existing volunteer coordinator and ELO position. And I'm gonna read that line again because that's what I had to work with. This would be in conjunction with the elimination of the existing volunteer coordinator and ELO position. You can imagine how hard it is for my family and I to process the loss of my job, especially in these critically trying times. 
But more importantly, I think it's essential that we acknowledge what the students are sharing and that we respect their input. Now is not the time for further disrupting students' education. I'm asking you to reconsider that my position remains full time in order to continue to maintain the high standards of the program that we've achieved over the past five years and to continue to build on them. Thank you. Thank you, John. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak at this time? I also would like to remind people that we will open up for comment at the end of the meeting as well. At this time, I'm not seeing anybody's raised hand either electronically or physically, and I'm going to ask for anybody else that can help me out if I'm missing somebody. Mm -mm. Okay, thank you. So, I will move to our agenda, which is uh, item number one, which is an health insurance uh, premium increase update. Donna or Marcy? I can do that. Wait. Yeah, okay. Um, so we, everybody knows, um, I'm sure that we were waiting for our final um, insurance, uh, health insurance uh, increase. Uh, we had started by placing a 10% holder in the budget and then um, we were informed that the ceiling would be a 6%. So we lowered it to 6%, hoping that we would be able to lower it even farther. Uh, this week, we're notified that, um, uh, in fact, our percentage of increase for health insurance is 5.95%. Uh, so that's a savings of $21,996. Um, at the last meeting, the board had um, stated their uh, request that um, that this amount of money be um, that we not replace things in the budget, but we use this amount of money to pass on to uh, taxpayers for uh, savings on the impact of their um, property taxes. Um, so we're looking at a $21,996 uh, savings. Thank you. And um, Marcy, will that be reflected in our, we, I'm sure we'll be getting a, um, a funding and tax impact sheet from you prior to our um, business meeting. I think you're still muted. Marcy, we can't hear you. Oh. I I um, had intended to actually put that number in for us tonight, Elizabeth. I will definitely have the document ready by next Tuesday. And by the end of this meeting, I could probably tell you what the tax impact is. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, just to reiterate for, for people, that's uh, the, the tab that says, um, let's see here, um funding and tax impact it has um the spending increases highlighted in yellow near the top and the tax impact hi highlighted in green at the bottom so um we'll look forward to that from you marcy thank you so moving on um we do i think we have some updates to our um I guess it would be the hopefully final updates to our list of reductions and changes, as well as equipment and positions included in the FY21 budget. And Donna, can you talk about that for us? We, the board did receive this email. There was an updated version this afternoon. Yes, there were, uh, yes, actually should have gotten two. So it's, it's the last one. Um, So 
So we do have our lists of um, things that were cut, um, the things that were not included in the budget. Um, We have taken out, um, as you know, at this time, things change. Um, we have students enrolling in classes at the high school, so there were some changes based on that. Um, we have eliminated the high school English slash literacy slash elective teachers um, based on enrollment, um, and that is um, an, a reduction of $55,234. Um, we have added in, we have changed the um, extended learning opportunities coordinator um, to a certified position. Um, so that was a change. It is a full-time position. So that was a change. I think those are the two changes that we have made. Thank you. Um, so we are at a 5.95% um, budget increase at this point. So we're down from a 6.05 to a 5.95. Okay. And so um, I think we'll, we'll probably be diving into questions on this soon. The, um, the original, not original, because there have been so many different versions. Um, there was a teacher leader coordinator of innovative programming and student support. And sure. it looks like that is no longer, we're not calling, yeah, or we've clarified the name, which I appreciate because I think we should call the position what it is. Yeah, we have taken that out. Right, I see extended learning opportunities. Sorry, my, my copy um, cut that off at the top <laughs> when I printed it. Yep, so I see that is in for a one uh, FTE. And um, do we have a job description? I don't know if Jeff or Donna can, because it's a new position or technically a new position. We do, we have a new job description, yes. And I don't think I can share it on my screen. I'm trying to see. Are you allowed, are you able to share Elizabeth? I'm gonna try. Wait, oh, maybe I can. Nope, I cannot. Wait, now you can, I think. I'll try, try now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> if you click share screen. Yep, I'm getting there. I have to find the job description in my email. If I think I have it. Description. Um, what job description are we looking for? The extended learning opportunity coordinator. There we go. It's on Elizabeth. Oh. You got it. All right. Well, yeah, except <laughs> not the right thing. Kind of. Not the right. right thing, but you've figured out how to share. So that's one good thing. All right, let me get back into my email. Um, Marcy had a hand raised. I don't know if. Yes, I have that property tax percentage increase calculated whenever you all are ready for it. Okay. That would be great because my e it's the the job description is Elizabeth oh, ELL coordinator maybe is this it yep aha uh -huh. yay Very thank good. you I'd like to uh, thank everybody for their patience and forbearance with me <laughs> we're all learning I have not shared yeah. before 
Um, so looking, it, it's, it's lengthy and this will be posted on the school department website with our budget materials. It's um, already up there, yeah. Oh, great, so it's already there. We, whenever we have um, a new teaching position or any sort of position, we need to um, have a um, job description for it. This job description has not been approved by the board yet because we can't approve something that you know, the, the budget hasn't been approved yet, but this is the draft job um, description. Um, and uh, I don't know if, since Jeff has worked on this extensively, if Jeff is willing to speak about it. So really the job description you're looking at is it's essentially almost identical with a couple of exceptions to the extended learning opportunity coordinator half of the previous job description that um, was for the combined volunteer coordinator, extended learning opportunity coordinator position. The significant changes are number one, to make it a teacher level position. Uh, I, I think it's been a goal of mine to make it a teacher level position for quite a few years. Um, and I know the current holder of the position has had a teacher certification in the past and I'm confident could get one in the future to be considered um, absolutely for the position. Um, the actual tasks are almost verbatim uh, with what they were before, except we added just a last few to emphasize the mentoring role um, because there is a sense that while this job description contemplates that the paperwork and bookkeeping and training aspect of the volunteer coordinator role will in fact be shifted to the business office, that um, the, the part of the role which will continue because it ties into extended learning opportunities is continuing to arrange mentoring opportunities in for middle school and, and elementary st students working with our high school students and our high school students working with classroom teachers in the middle school in Pond Cove. Um, so it's really putting an emphasis there and making the entire job about extended learning opportunities. And Jeff, I have a quick question because uh, at our last budget meeting, we had um, a much smaller uh, public audience um, you had talked about uh, this position in particular. The board actually had a lot of questions about this. Um, and you had talked about it, it you know, the, the percentage of time that went into the, the volunteer coordinator part of the job versus the ELO. And it really wasn't a 50-50, so I was hoping you would talk about that again for a greater audience. And we can't hear you. I mean, John, John can at some point speak to it better than I because he lives it on a day-to-day -day basis. If it's okay, I'd like to step back and, and, take, and say a few words sort of beyond just the 50-50 versus what this contemplates, if that's okay, Elizabeth. Sure. Um, to just sort of explain what happened. Uh, for, first, I want to say that there is definitely some misinformation out there, and I'm glad to that this school board meeting can sort of help clarify it. Um, um, because there is, I've gotten emails that suggest that people believe that there was an intent, for example, to, to eliminate the student-driven learning position or the student-driven learning program. That was, that was never part of anybody's proposal. Um, I've received emails that suggest that the proposal was to eliminate um, extended learning opportunities for students, which was absolutely, the farthest thing from anybody's mind has never been a part of any proposal. Um, but there are some, some, some basic truths um, beyond that misinformation that I, I wanna just, if, I, if you, the board would indulge me just to sort of set a bar, broader context. Um, I personally remain committed to student-driven learning and I know the board is absolutely committed to student-driven learning. Um, I'm completely committed to the idea, committed to the idea of making available extended learning opportunities for students and even expanding them. Um, and, I'm, um, and I'm aware that they, as, as both 
Heather and Elizabeth have made clear is that extended learning opportunities, that idea is an integral part of the board's commitment to making alternative pathways available. Um, but just to give a little bit of background about the chronology of decision making and why sometimes decision making gets a little bit messy and tentative as it did in this case. Um, and that is there's another truth that as an administrative team we always need to deal with. And in this case it was to try to come up with a budget proposal that brought down the increases to 6% um, at the board's request. Um, so one of the agreements that I think all of the administrators started that discussion with is that what we were going to absolutely prioritize is that we had to have the classroom teachers to offer the classes that we needed to teach without increasing class size. So that was absolutely 100% the priority as, as I really think it always is, at least in Cape Elizabeth in my experience. Um, so we had lots of discussions about it and towards the end of the one of the discussions, a proposal was made to try to get us down to where we wanted to take the volunteer coordinator part of the current position, the way it's currently structured and move it into the business office. Um, there was never any proposal in any budget, any discussions within the administrative team at all. There never has been to eliminate extended learning opportunities, to eliminate student driven learning or to ex eliminate the extended learning opportunity part of the position that's currently a full time comp combined volunteer and extended learning opportunity position. So on paper, at least that proposal um, um, was was really to take half of the position, the volunteer coordinator role and move it to the business office that left us with half of the position on paper um, that is designated as a non teacher extended learning opportunities position. Um, so that one of the things I've always believed for the last five years, ever since this position was created, was that it would help with its longevity. It would help with its, um, it would help with some logistical and management issues if this position became a regular teacher position, as opposed to a nebulous sort of undefined quasi administrative position, which is the way it's been um, ever since it was created. And I, and, I, and I don't think, um, well, I, I, think it, I think there's a lot of wisdom to that and I can go into some specific details if the board has any questions about it. Um, so the proposal, um, originally what I, what I did faced with the movement of the volunteer coordinator position, what I did is I already had in the budget a proposal for a half time teacher leader position. Um, so what I decided to do was to reframe the extended learning opportunity part of the, the current position as a half-time teacher leader position, which was consistent with its original job description in terms of the supposed 50-50 split of the job. Um, and in all other respects, the position would have remained the same. Um, now this is, this, and then this gets to what you're talking about, Elizabeth, because there is a rub um, in that analysis, and I recognize it from the very beginning, and that is that because of the success of the extended learning opportunities that we've made available to Cape Elizabeth High School students, um, and particularly this year, there's been a significant expansion of those opportunities uh, with the really strong support and encouragement um, from Nate Carpenter, the assistant principal, and myself, working closely with John. Um, so the rub is that in fact, the way things have played out, particularly this year is a pro I would say roughly 80 to 90% of the position in reality is dedicated to extended learning opportunities and a whole lot less time is dedicated to volunteer coordinator role, which was originally conceptualized as half of the job, half of the combined job. Um, so, so well before um, I received any emails or saw any petitions or anything like that, I've been, I've been thinking, is there a different way that I can restructure that proposal um, to allow for the sustaining and even growth of the extended learning opportunities part of the position without her harming class size and while we can still offer the teach the classes that we need to teach. 
And, and so here's what changed for me between our last meeting and this meeting. And that is that our course tallies have gotten more solidified in the past two weeks. Um, we are about a month behind in where we normally are um, in sort of taking the steps that lead us ultimately to the creation of a master schedule. Um, late last week, I got a, uh, an updated tally, which I feel pretty confident about is a pretty good, there's going to be some changes around the margins as there always is about this time of year, but it's pretty good. Um, in a normal year, I would have had those numbers a month ago, um, and perhaps I, I would have seen the possible pathway to resolution before this. But I do think there's a workable option, and it's the one that's before the board right now. Um, it allows for the continued support for and even expansion of student-driven learning opportunities and extended learning opportunities, which is a high part of the goal, board's goals, and which I certainly have always supported. Um, it does change the ELO position from a quasi-administrative or sort of undefined position to a full-time teacher position. Um, it allows us to teach the classes we need to teach in other areas without increasing class size. But I want to be upfront, there is a trade-off um, that goes along with this restructuring, and I'll get into the trade-off, but it has to do with the teacher staffing of our Achievement Center, because I want to be transparent about that. Um, so the specific elements of the proposal are uh, to change the current position of ELO or volunteer, the combined ELO and volunteer coordinator position to a 100% ELO position with elements of volunteer coordination that have to do, that are tied in, as I mentioned before, with the goals of the ELO program. Um, to make the, to tweak the job description, and the job description is still up on my screen, so I assume it is everybody else's as well, so it becomes a teacher position. Um, and there's a few other minor tweaks as well, and, and to move the more bookkeeping aspects and training aspects and record keeping aspects of the volunteer coordinator role to the business office, which is the proposal that initiated this whole conversation to begin with. So in order to get that, in, to, to get to that place in a budget neutral way, what it means is eliminating the request for a half-time teacher leader position. Um, so that is gone. And to eliminate the proposal for a six-tenths teacher position that was to address needs for additional staff um, that were dependent upon what the course tally showed us. Um, so, getting to the trade-off. So what is the trade-off? The trade-off is this, and I want to be transparent about it. I recommend the trade-off, but it will not be without some different points of view. There will, in all likelihood, be no English teacher staff in the, in the Achievement Center next year. I anticipate, based on the bubble as it works its way through, that the following year we'll be able to get back to partial English teacher, and probably the year after that, I'm hoping full English teacher uh, representation in the Achievement Center. Um, I, I will put that, that change in context, though, and that is for the board to understand and everybody to understand that even with the addition of a three-fifths math teacher position, which is also part of the recommended budget, I anticipate that we will also have no math teachers present in, in the Achievement Center next year. Um, and that there will be a similar flow back into the Achievement Center as that bubble works its way through. Um, so what that means for the Achievement Center is we will have to beef up what we are able to do there between the Achievement Center coordinator and the student peer tutoring opportunities that are available. Um, and that conversation, that issue, um, that anticipation that the Achievement Center teacher staffing might need to take a temporary hit in order to meet the budget goals um, is something that I started to talk with Joe Wagner about, who's the Achievement Center coordinator in the first week in January, um, because I anticipated that, um, that, that we might have some issues coming up. Um, so, so from a budgetary standpoint, the change, as Marcy and Don have talked about, is essentially budget neutral, and there's even a little bit of savings. Um, my hope is that to the extent there's any savings, they can be diverted in the direction of the Achievement Center to help us with um, the work we need to do to beef up the, what will remain in the Achievement Center for next year, which can provide valuable service. 
Um, so if I can just come back, I'm getting close to the, close to being done, but I really thought it was important to put this in context because I'm sure I haven't received anywhere near the number of emails that the board and the superintendent have, but I've had quite a few. Um, so I just want to say that I'm proud of the work that um, we've done um, under John's leadership, expanding extended learning opportunities for students. I'm proud of the student-driven learning program. My own daughter went is an alumnus, if so to speak, of the, of the student-driven learning program, and it was a great growth experience for her. Um, this proposal is not the result of an email campaign. It is a result of l looking at and figuring out ways to accomplish the goals that the, that the board has and that I have within the budget constraints that we all operate on there. Um, so I will also say, if I can add a bit, step back even farther, um, speaking of alternative pathways, the past three and a half weeks at Cape Elizabeth High School and each of the other two schools has been an exercise in alternative pathways for every single student and every single staff member in Cape Elizabeth High School and the other two schools as well. And I am completely proud of all the work that everybody has been doing, students and staff alike, um, as we sort of learn together and, and go down that alternative pathway. Um, and I, and I do want to say as well that in, in connection with um, the circumstances that have caused us all to be following that alternative pathway, um, our economy is in a really perilous state and there are people who are dying. And if um, the people in Cape Elizabeth rally to support this budget this year, as modest as it really is, I think, there will never be greater evidence of how much this community continues to value education as it will be saying it does in this perilous time. Um, and thank you very much. That's my, that's my description and I'm glad to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you for that, Jeff. Um, I'd like to open it up to the board for uh, follow up and questions. I have a question, Elizabeth. Can you Go hear ahead. me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and these are for Jeff. And the first one I think is a, a quick and easy one. Um, when you were talking about the trade offs for this new proposal and the achievement center, um, that there, there's going to be different teacher covering, there's not going to be English or math teachers in, in the achievement center. Uh, what about the peer tutoring? I, I know that's not the same as teachers, but can we beef that up a little bit more to help support the uh, students that do use the Achievement Center? Because I know we've got a strong tutoring program. Yeah, we've got a lot of kids who have volunteered to help other students, and absolutely that's part of the proposal. And, and you're right, Heather, it's not the same as teacher um, right. teachers assisting, but students can assist an awful lot. Um, we do need to, and, and beefing up this, the student peer tutoring aspect of the Achievement Center, that's one of the things I started to talk about with Joe Wagner um, in the first week in January as I sort of was speculating <laughs> what might happen. So one of the reasons okay. why, there wasn't one of the reasons I say that if there are any savings, and I think whatever they are, they are modest, if any, um, from this change, it would be really helpful I, I anticipate in order to get the students up to fully as, as up to speed as they can be, one of the things that would be really helpful is to provide and bring them in for some summer training um, so that they can, they can learn some tips and tricks of being uh, the most truly effective um, uh, peer tutor that they can be. We've had great results from peer tutoring in the past and, um, and I think we can, we, can, we can beef that up and it'll get us through the next the next in the next couple of years as we go through this the bubble of, of students passing through the school great so then um thank you for that jeff i had then i'd like to turn and um move over to the extended learning opportunity coordinator position that's being proposed and i just want to summarize my understanding and then i want to ask a few questions it was a volunteer and an elo position that was meant to be 50-50, but it was quite imbalanced with more of the ELO position. I'm seeing you shake your head. 
you know, nod, yes, that you're right along with me and I'm, I'm getting this right. And then what, what decided to happen was to, to move the administrative piece, the fingerprinting and the, the paperwork to central office. Cause I think I've heard you say Donna before that that's common practice and then allow the ELO teacher to then really be the ELO teacher and use bring in volunteer work, but more in the mentoring aspect and the, the, the connections that it would have with the ELO curriculum and program. So, so far I understand that. In the shift of trying to work with the budget, um, it got discussed to bring it down to a half time and combine it with a te teacher leader position. Um, and then that position recently, in the past week, you have decided to let the teacher leadership position and keep the ELO coordinator position and make it a full time from a half time and make it a certified position because of certain logistics and the longevity of the program and that it, it, it um, sort of defines it a little bit. I don't want to say that because that's not what you said. Um, and so I think that that helps understand some of the shifts in why that happened. So here are my questions. Um, are there, can you speak to again, what the teacher leadership and why you thought even in the beginning to combine half time ELO to, with the teacher leader, can you just clarify that and then clarify how you thought, oh, well, that's not the right answer. I, I just would be curious. I know you said that there's a lot to see in this. So I think I think I got it. Um, you, you froze up a little bit at the end, but I think I got the gist of the question, Heather. Um, yeah, okay. the, the original yeah the original goal that um, uh, Mr. Carpenter and I had for the teacher leader position was not really directly connected to extended learning opportunities at all, except in the most sort of high level sense. It wasn't the idea of, of um, offer, having that person serve as the extended learning opportunity coordinator. That was not the initial goal at all. The initial goal was a recognition that we have teachers um, who have, have some interest and talent in exploring the possibility of leadership in the school. Um, and, and so as Mr. Carpenter and I were talking about things, um, one of the things we both realized is we've had a lot of programs that we've added in the last um, three, four years to really try to expand a lot of alternative pathways for kids. Um, but we sort of together have a sense that we could do a better job sort of coordinating those things. Um, for example, um, Freshman Academy has grown from one section to two sections to three sections. Um, our, the number of students we're sending to paths has, has more than tripled in the last two or three years. Um, we have students who, uh, more and more students who have issues with um, school attendance and school avoidance. Um, and, and, and so our thought was, let's create a role that would allow a person to experience a leadership position, helping us to coordinate some of those things and really tighten them up. Um, but also that person would probably have been delegated to do some of the day-to-day -day work that goes into being an administrator. Like that's not the most exciting work, like helping Mr. Carbon Brett with some attendance things and those sorts of things. So the, the idea of taking that position and completely reframing it to be, the extended learning opportunity coordinator thing was simply to find a vessel, a teacher vessel, to house um, a teacher level extended learning opportunities coordinator role. That was all it was. Uh, but it was truly, a, um, it, it really wasn't a good fit from the beginning. And I realized it wasn't ideal from the beginning, but um, it was a way to move the position towards a teacher leader position. At least on paper, it was the same magnitude of position as the, uh, as the ELO part of the role, the original volunteer and ELO combined role was. Um, and so it seemed like a good way to at least maintain what we're doing and possibly down the road be able to add to it. Um, but um, 
So that's a long-winded answer. I don't know if I've answered all your the entire question. No, you have. And so I guess, can you just speak one more time? Because um, I started to put words that you hadn't said about why you feel it's important. And I've heard Donna as well say that uh, the role should be a certified teacher. Can you expand on that? Um, and that now is the time to put it into the to the job description since there's a little bit of restructuring happening, yes? Right, and that's really taking advantage of a job restructuring and making it go the direction that I think it should go. Um, mm -hmm. From a very simple logistical standpoint, one of the complications about um, having a non-certified teacher be in charge of planning and delivering a curriculum is that technically that person has to be overseen by somebody who does have a teacher certification which is why we've always had to have a, an official teacher of record overseeing SDL, even though John's always done a great job with SDL. Um, it, it creates an additional um, logistical complication that gets confusing for kids, it gets confusing for parents about why somebody else's name is on a transcript other than the teacher that they have. I also simply think that having it as a teacher position gives it more weight gives it more solidity. Um, it ties it to the rights that teachers have under the collective bargaining agreement. It ties it to, it gives it a clear supervision and evaluation process, which has not existed in the past for it. Things have been very murky about this position that was created as a district position, but it was mostly in the high school that the work was being done. So it cleans up that whole teacher evaluation and supervision part of it as well. If I thought about it, I'm sure I'd come up with other wish issues as well, but it's just been a very nebulous, cloudy position. And, and I, again, I think that this is not an issue about trying to angle it in any way away from the person who currently occupies that position. Um, I think there does need to be a process mm -hmm. of, so, but, but it, because I, because I think um, in the first year he was here, he, there was, there was actually conditional certification. So, um, so I think we can, we can, that, that's not, there's no hidden agenda here, except to solidify it and make it a more solid base to expand the position. Okay. I, I'm wondering if Donna, thank you, Jeff. I'm wondering if Donna has anything else to add to that about it being a certified teacher position. No. Um, or if Jeff said everything. You're muted. We need to unmute you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. No. I, I think I think the the grading piece is a huge uh, a huge piece um, from my perspective. Um, I, I think it, it's very confusing to have one person teaching a class, um, but then or responsible for class, but then not be able to give the the students a grade for that. Um, and uh, as well, I think it really. Um, solidifies moving forward um, the class and, and strengthens the class to have a certified teacher um, in there. Uh, it just gives it more, um, I don't know, more teeth, more teeth to having, to having it. Um, we don't have, um, we don't have people that aren't certified teaching in other classes. Um, if, if teachers are going to work with students, they, they need to be certified teachers. And what does it take to become a certified teacher? Is this like a three-year master's degree program? Is this? No, it, de it depends on what, a, what, um, what courses a person has. The uh, certification office uh, does an analysis of transcripts and then lets the person um, know what they need to take to be certified. But there are some, um, uh, some certifications that one can get uh, while they're working for their regular certification. Like a temporary certification, which would be fine. So I'm going to jump in here because Nasser has had his uh, virtual hand raised for quite a while here. So I'd like to call on him, please. Uh, thank you very much, Elizabeth, and thanks, Heather, for asking some of the questions that I had, and uh, I'll go on that. Uh, it's actually the time for me to pray, but this time I skipped the pray because the subject matter is very important. 
And I did have a talk um, with Heather, and we are trying to create and ask questions in regards to programs and not staff uh, as well. Uh, so the question about, one of the questions I had was, is this code in a position of full-time or part-time? Because I know John had said in his voice that it is a part-time. I think it is a full-time. The question about uh, the requirement for certification for a teacher to certify is a really, really good question, and that will answer a lot of my questions if I can ask a follow-up question. Uh, and I'm not, maybe I'm not supposed to ask this question, but as the current, uh, as John, uh, Jeff has alluded to, does John presently have a teacher certification of, uh, or not? And maybe that question not uh, allowed to be answered. But personally, uh, if this title implies coordinator, and, the, and, the, and there's going to be the central office majority of the time for coordinating between the staff and the student, uh, I don't think they will be able to interact in the same way as they used to with students directly. That's one of my opinions. And the other one is that the fact that it's a coordinator means that we do not need to require a certificate, teacher certificate, but we can say we strongly recommend it. Uh, so those are my questions for now. And I do have many other questions. I'm looking at my paper here, but I'll save them towards the end and how the conversation goes. Thank you, Nasser. So I will turn it over to Donna and Jeff to address. Um, I, I, I know just having heard that I can, I can address that if we look at the, the sheet that we were sent, that it is a full-time position, which I think you understood. And then um, Donna and Jeff can talk about whether this is a central office position, which my understanding is that it is not, and, and what sort of um, responsibilities and roles it has and why it needs to be a certified teacher. No, I, I'm not sure why in the design of this position it was ever placed in central office. Um, but it really is a high school position. Um, I believe in practice, it's always been a high school position um, and that's the place it needs to be. Um, I feel strongly that when, you know, we have teachers, adults working with students that, that um, they should be certified. The, the grading piece is, um, is rather cumbersome as Jeff was talking about. Um, we have to find somebody else who can be the acting teacher and actually give the grade even though that person um, isn't, um, isn't the, the teacher or the person in charge of the course. Um, as we move through the next couple years with our big bubble at the school, um, there's going to be fewer people available to take that responsibility on. Um, we have talked about um, the importance of it being a certified teacher, um, being a recognized program and having a certified teacher um, be responsible for it. I, I think Jeff did a great job explaining it. I don't really have too much to add from that. Jeff, do you have anything else to add? So I would only emphasize that the, um, the position will absolutely, the person who has the position will absolutely be located um, in the high school um, and will be working directly with students um, and will be teaching and guiding and mentoring through the students, the uh, student driven learning part of it. Um, and we'll be working with lots of students in other aspects uh, um, of creating internships or um, putting together volunteer opportunities for students and, and that sort of thing. But, but the, the student-driven learning part of it in particular is a direct teacher role with a student in a, a teacher in a classroom. Um, and there are, I think, I think we both talked about the advantages of having that be, a, be done by a teacher. Nasser, does that answer your questions? Yes, it does for now. But I, um... I asked John in the text whether he has a teacher certification. So that's a question to him, not to everybody else. Yes. 
Yeah, so I, I don't feel that we should be discussing personnel matters in the meeting. So <laughs> thank you. Um, Heather, Heather, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to follow through and, and um, point out a comment that you can, since you're in negotiations, if we have a certified teacher position, right, then that person can become part of a collective bargaining agreement and part of a unit um, and, and be supported in that way as well, right? They become, they're no longer an at will employee and they're, they're connected to some group within the bargaining system. That's Correct. my understanding. Correct. I don't know um, what cluster that person uh, that would belong to or how that would work. I leave that up to people who know more about it than I do. But if it's a teacher position, it would be part of the, the CEEA um, union. OK. Are there further questions? When did you, oh, I thought I saw someone put their hand up, but I don't know. Um, it's Michelle Whitney, but I don't know if this is just for the board to ask questions or. At I, this time it is just for the okay. board. We would love for you to please don't leave <laughs> and, and please give your comment at the end. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Board members. Further discussion and questions? We're usually a very talkative group. Heather. I would just like to um, say again that um, in all the emails that I've been reading over the past, I'd say two days, um, the appreciation for the ELO program, the volunteer program, the outpouring of um, incredibly grateful uh, to John for having for for having made that possible for so many students. Um, and that I think the intention behind these conversations and this uh, discussion and this budget season is to help make the program stronger. I know we've said that, but let it um, pull away pieces of the job that pull you, pull the person responsible for that job away from the ELO piece into the administrative pieces and be able to have an effect on more students. So um, I guess I also just wanna personally thank John for, for what you have done in this program and that um, though this is a restructuring, um, it's, I, I just wanna say, I just wanna say thank you, um, so. That's what I'm gonna say. Thank you, Heather. It's there, been really lovely to see all the all the support and to read all of it and to read how important it's been. Um, I would just like to say that I'm gonna not I'm gonna try not to echo your statements, but um, having been on the board for uh, quite a few years, um, I was around before we had these opportunities before we had um, this position or these this amalgam of positions and so it is incredibly heartwarming to see you know where we went and how we had this very nascent program and how you know it has grown and it's it i agree it's been wonderful to hear from students especially i'm sorry i you know adults are great but it's wonderful to hear from students who have had these wonderful experiences and made connections and growth opportunities so i agree that that has been outstanding it's wonderful to see um phil 
Uh, yeah, just briefly, I, I, there's been a lot of great questions, so I really don't have any questions. I have questions that we've already asked. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to uh, say that as the newest board member, what was helpful for me to see the emails was to learn about the program. I, mean, I, I learned a lot about what the program does and its effect on people um, that I didn't know, quite frankly. Um, and we didn't spend a lot of time with it. It was at the last meeting that we had a proposal. Um, and now that proposal has changed, I think, for the better from, from what I'm hearing and reading. Um, so I just wanted to make that comment. I thought the, the, the emails I received were very helpful um, and thoughtful to really understanding the value of the position and what, what it brings to the students. So I thought that was, that was a, a valuable uh, thing. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Are there further comments or questions from the, oh, Hope. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I, I just wanted to comment um, to, to re reiterate what Phil said. I think all of my questions have been answered and I did wanna just comment that um, I know sometimes it can appear as though um, we sit and and nod and 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 vote um, but I I just want to say that I um, you know the, the changes were um, hit you know were something I was thinking about um, intensely from the last meeting and I sought out the information and got um, pretty much the same uh, pieces of information um, between that meeting and tonight that we heard tonight from Jeff and he said it better tonight. Um, I, I just wanted to, you know, make it clear to everyone that, you know, the emails are read. We're reading all the emails. It's all taken very seriously. I don't think we've ever doubted the importance of the extended learning opportunities um, role and, and, and what it, um, the, the interest that it serves for our students. So uh, I just wanted to, you know, chime in um, to that effect um, and not, um, you know, it can be sometimes appear as though we're not um, absorbing information from from the public and comment. So thank you, Hope. That's it. Kimberly? Thank you. I had my, my little icon hand up, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think it was effective. Um, I just want to say I, I appreciate, um, Jeff, I appreciate you revisiting um, this position and, and just uh, taking a, a real hard, realistic look at it. Um, I, I feel much better about it as a full-time uh, ELO position. Um, I, I think it's a great program and I think we, we have, um, we've been fully supportive of the program right along and I think our strategic plan um, now just strengthens that support. So um, I, I think this is, um, this is a, a positive adjustment. So I, I and I appreciate the, um, the ongoing thought and uh, and looking at things, um, you know, I, I know you guys do a great job with taking a sharp pencil to everything, but um, but just the continued um, contemplation is appreciated. So thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, Nasser, would you like to speak? Yes. Uh, so I think uh, Heather has in one of her emails beautifully articulated and maybe Donna can touch upon it, and I think the public needs to know. Uh, one of the uh, folks asked about why can the existing uh, person, or John for this case, cannot be simply promoted to this new, new position. So in regards to legality and procedures and policies, maybe for the public we need to remind them of that, why that is. Donna, do you want to talk about hiring practices for um, new positions? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so when we have a new position, um, we have a procedure that we go through and, um, you know, we worked this out with the association. Uh, uh, it's, it's part of the process that we do and we, um, we advertise for a period of time within the district. Um, and then we advertise for a period of time outside of the district. Um, so that anyone who would like would have an opportunity to apply for the position. So um, we always err on the side of caution um, when we advertise for new positions that we go through the, the process so that um, uh, it's completely fair to everyone. Um, it, it does have to do with labor laws as well. So um, just the idea of interviewing. Um, uh, advertising for positions. We do this with ed techs. We do this with any position that we, any new position that um, that we have. Thank you, Donna. Are there any other questions from board members or comments? I see some electronic hands still raised, but maybe they were raised from the last time people wanted to speak. Kimberly and Nasser. Oh, okay. It was from the last time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I too would like to thank Jeff Shedd for um, taking a, a long look at this, um, not just this position, but you know all the um, the goals that the board holds, and um, making sure that we stay within our class size and teacher load guidelines, and are able to offer all the courses that we hope to offer. Um, it's not lost on me that trade-offs have to be made. And um, while we appreciate that you are recommending these trade-offs, especially um, losing teachers out of the um, Achievement Center to kind of make up for the difference um, in um, full-time positions, it, it, we understand it does take, it does take a hit. The, the experience for our students does take a hit. So um, we, I, I'm not going to say we because I don't speak for the entire board, but I do appreciate um, the the deep thought that you put into it. Um, we haven't we had a, a budget meeting, um, you know, even if we have them weekly, things change, sands move, and um, I think that given a different year and a different scenario, you probably would have known about your class size totals and needs quite a bit sooner and we wouldn't have as much shifting this late in the budget season. Am I correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. All right, thank you. Um, unless there's further discussion on this particular topic, um, I think the board probably should move on to um, any further questions or discussion on any any other part of the budget and um, if Marcy is prepared I think she said she was ready to show us our um, tax impact document are you ready for me to share it Elizabeth or do you want me to just tell you the percentage increase I'd be happy for you to share it. It's my favorite document in the whole budget binder. So. Okay. So I put in our new number in, let me just show you right here. I put in our new number with a 5.95% increase in expenditures at the top here in the yellow, down at the bottom, Property tax increase, 6.27%. Okay, and um, so that takes into account our, um, our hard health insurance premium increase of 5.95% and any, pretty much any, anything else that was unknown is now known. Correct. Okay, thank you. 
And I'll make sure you have your favorite document in the world, Elizabeth, this week, going into next Monday. <laughs> Thank you. It's just a nice uh, view of things. Thank you. I like it too. So at this time, um, do would board members like to have any further discussion before we go into a straw poll to move uh, this budget out of workshop and onto the agenda for adoption at our business meeting next Tuesday? I'm seeing none. Is any, am I missing anybody? Okay. So at this time, and this is not a binding vote, this is a straw poll for the school board to move this budget onto the business meeting agenda. Um, at this point, I would ask the board members to unmute themselves and if they feel comfortable moving this budget forward to please say yes. And um, because we're in this um, unusual format where raising our hands uh, in the, the window may not be seen, I'm actually going to call people's names just to make sure. So, um, I'm going to just go with how I see you on my screen. There, there's no rhyme or reason to it. So I have to start with Heather. Yes. And Hope. Yes. Laura. Yes. Phil. Yes. Kimberly. Yes. Nasser. As Jeff said, this is a big testing for the public. How much they support us? So I'll say yes. Okay. I'm making sure I haven't missed any board members. Everybody, please help me out here. <laughs> and I say yes. So uh, with that straw poll, we are, um, the superintendent will develop the agenda to include the adoption of this budget. And um, at this time, I would like to open the floor to public comment again. And I remind people to please um, unmute yourself and um, introduce yourself. Um, we'd love for comments to be kept to about three minutes. And um, remember, we're, we're not taught, we are trying to follow our school board policy on public comments. So we are really trying to talk about uh, positions and not people as much as possible. So the floor is open and um, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Maybe Michelle Whitney. Right oh, there. Michelle's waving. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. It's hard to see you. I know it's dark where I am. Thank you. Um, I want to thank all of you and for getting back to emails so quickly and uh, to Mr. Shedd and Mr. Carpenter for putting so much thought into this. Um, I do have a couple questions and one with this uh, student driven learning Oh, well, I guess for, for the position that we're talking about, the ELO position, is the only class the student-driven learning or are there other classes I'm not aware of? I'm gonna to defer to Jeff or Donna. Well, currently, um, the only class is student-driven learning. Um, that's, that's the only experience that students have that, sort of closely resemble a traditional classroom setting, but it's, it's different, but it's a teacher working with a student in a classroom. The scheduling is very different and there's a whole lot of independence that the students have. There are other experiences that students get under the general auspices of extended learning opportunity that can result in credit. Um, those are more in the nature of work studies that would be overseen by the extended learning opportunity coordinator or in long-term intern internships and those sorts of things. And I think those are areas that all of us, and, and I think we've made a good beginning, particularly in the last two years, opening up some of those types of opportunities for kids. And I think all of us who are um, who have been sort of interested in this agenda uh, see those as areas of potential growth. So they're not, they're sort of yes and no, Michelle, but, but there's still things that 
for which credit is given. And so technically it's under the auspices of the person who's in this position as the teacher. Okay, so, all right, good. So that, that helps with that. So yeah, because my son um, was in John's class la um, this, in this position that, you know who I'm talking about. So in the class this year, last year, and I don't, uh, my understanding is that there wasn't a lot of teaching. They would meet about once a week um, and they had things that they had to, um, there were blogs they had to update and they got feedback. But it was really um, a gift of resources and time and feedback and mentorship versus actual teaching because, you know, because of the everyone's doing something different. So, you know, there couldn't be a, a ton of teaching going on. So I guess my question is uh, just two more questions. One, and I can't remember if my son, if it was pass and or pass fail, because I don't remember a grade coming out of that class, but I could just be forgetting it. And then also, um, I think that the superintendent said that um, if the person that they want to hire for the job is not is not certified, then he or she could be in the process of getting certificated cer certified. And that I just want to confirm that I heard that correctly. So the person could, if they didn't have their certification, they could be getting it, and that wouldn't eliminate them from um, applying for the job. There is a temporary certification um, that allows you to work towards your certification. And so that would be okay with you, that you're, that's fine with you? Uh, yeah, that's determined by the state. Okay. And I guess to um, Mr. Shedd, that is it, is it a pass fail class or is it a graded class? Because you talked a lot about grades you know, it was a lot of mention about teachers being certified because of the grades. And so I was just trying to remember that. So, um, so John will correct me if I'm wrong because I may be wrong about this. I believe it is pass fail, but even a pass or a fail is a grade. Um, it's, not a, it's, it's not necessarily a traditional grade, but it is a grade that's entered. Um, so I hope that answers your question. It does, great, thanks so much. Thank you, Michelle. Are there other members of the public that wish to speak or ask questions at this time? Oh, Nicoletta. Uh, hello, um, my name is Nicoletta. Uh, I'm a junior at CHS and I understand everything that the school board is saying regarding how we're not supposed to talk about the specific person in question. Today, we're more supposed to refer to the job title. However, I feel like it's not fair to have such a disconnect between the person and the job when the programs that have been grown over the past few years that we've been talking about with student-driven learning and paths have been directly overseen by John and he's put so much work into growing these programs and he's formed such deep connections with so many students at our high school. Um, but yeah, so Nicoletta, I don't want to be the bad person, but it's in our policy that we can't have these discussions and um, in, in these meetings in this way. It, it's about the program. I, the emails have come through. We, we hear the messages, but, and, I, and I don't want to be the bad person to cut you off, but it's my role as the job chair, as the chair to, um, it's about respect for the staff. It's a, about, um, about respect for their privacy and it, it we just can't have conversations about the individuals here i hope you can respect that policy okay uh thank you then. if you would like to speak to the position we'd be happy to hear what you have to say um speaking to the position my understanding was that the position that's currently in the school has a certain like lack of rigidness. And I think that that allows for a lot of flexibility that creates more opportunities for students. So if it were to become more defined, I think that that could have the potential to um, not be expanding the program in the way that I know that um, the school board wants to, but I was planning more to speak towards the teacher's character. So I'll, I'll cut myself off. Thank you. And we appreciate that, Nicoletta, and we understand 
Um, and we have received, as, as you know, so many emails and we appreciate them and we understand that you want to speak from the heart, but we also appreciate you're talking about the position and that's what we need to do in this public forum. So thank you for that. Thank you for your input. And I would also like to say, Nicoletta, thank you for your courage to speak up. I, do, I don't think it's easy and um, I really appreciate that courage. Yes, thank um, you for listening. Absolutely. Then, thank you for responding to my email as well. You're welcome. Thank you for writing. I think John's dying to say something. I see John's like hand to have waving. Him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say John next. Um, hi, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this entirely out of the personal and speak just as an educator, um, as an as taxpayer. Um, uh, first, I, I also want to re reiterate my, my thanks to Mr. Shedd for the work that he's done to make this happen. I can't imagine what it's like to be going through the budget process. That's not my strength and that's, not why, I, that's why I don't do that. I want to just point out that I'm a member of a professional group of about 31 um, educators that do some form of my job in districts all around us. Um, we have conversations with the state. Various members are, are helping to draft new guidelines for things like internships and co-ops and job shadows. And it's a great group to be a part of. Everybody does the work in the context of their own particular district, district which is wonderful. And I include Cape Elizabeth in that. And I, I just want to point out that because I'm aware of that group, because of, I'm aware of the kinds of work that people are doing, regardless of the person who fills this new position, I think it positions Cape Elizabeth and Cape, Cape Elizabeth schools and Cape Elizabeth high school in particular, particular to take on a real leadership role in that and, and, to, and to show that, um, that we can be a high performing AP kind of school, but we can also acknowledge that uh, these other kinds of experiences are equally important to academics and sometimes uh, extend that. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm taking it away from the personal um, and just saying that I, I, I think it's a really smart move. I'm very excited about it um, purely as an educator because I, again, I think that we as a district can, can become uh, leaders in this work if we choose to. And everything I'm hearing tonight um, signals that the board and administrators are choosing to do that. And I'm very, very heartened by that. Um, so that's it, thanks. Thank you, John. <laughs> Wynn has his hand up. Oh, <clears throat> Wynn, thank you. Wynn? Wynn is muted. There you are. Oh. But you're still muted. All right, there we go, hey. yes. Mm -hmm. Took a while. Sorry, I'm in the dark here. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've been listening to with, with great interest to the whole conversation and um, I'm not, uh, you know, and I think that the, the, um, the extended learning opportunities position is an important one in our school and I think that a lot of kids take advantage of it. I was concerned about um, the decision to remove people that, that this would not so much that, that that position, but that the decision not to have, add an English teacher would mean the removal of English support in the Achievement Center. Um, that is, um, that will not be replaced by um, student tutors. Um, you could, we, they may be able to help, but I will be very honest and say that the level of, um, of help that students would get from a student is vastly different than they would get from an experienced English teacher. And um, I think you have to ask uh, yourselves um, what the cost of, of this is to students and whether um, the number of students who, um, who will lose out on this is, um, is worth the cost. Um, we're talking about two years um, and for a blue ribbon school, I'm not so sure that's the kind of road you want to go down. Um, obviously, it's your decision and you have some uh, very difficult decisions to make regarding the budget, but to lose both math and English in the Achievement Center, um, that's pretty big. And I'm wondering if uh, even the, the, whether the Achievement Center um, itself won't uh, eventually be something that um, would be on the chopping block as we continue to cut away from the services that are offered there. So it's just something I think um, 
I think that uh, I just like you to consider. So thank you. Thank you, Wynn. I see that your hand is still up, Wynn, and Nicoletta, your hand is still up. And I want to make sure that you don't have more to say as I'm looking for people with their hands up. Okay, that answers that. Um, are there other members of the public that would like to speak tonight? I'm giving this a good long pause because Elizabeth, I want to make sure. it, it looks like Nicoletta and Kimberly are interested. Yeah, I in see speaking. that now. Okay. I'm going to go to Nicoletta first. Hi, um, I'm sorry, this will be brief, but speaking to what um, Mr. Phillips said about peer tutoring and not being the same experience as working with an actual teacher, um, I've been a peer tutor for the past several, uh, since the end of freshman year, and it is a unique experience because you get to work with someone who has been through the same curriculum that you have, but it is in no way comparable to having an actual um, teacher review your work or work with you on what's going on in their class. So I just wanted to emphasize that point as someone like on the other side of it. Thank you. Thank you, Nicoletta. I just wanna make sure that we're deferring to members of the public before we go back to the board. I'm not ignoring you, Kimberly. Just wanna make sure that there aren't any members of the public that wish to speak at this time. Okay, Kimberly, do you have something else you'd like to say? I, it was um, more just a question um, around the Achievement um, Center and I, I'm not so familiar with um, when it came to be or what the original vision was, um, but so maybe Jeff could just speak to that a tiny bit, but also wondering, um, has it, been staffed um, with peer um, peer tutors in the past, or has it always been teachers, um, you know, English math teachers? So um, I think the Achievement Center was created um, around 15 years ago or so. It was initially funded. I, I wrote a grant um, to, the, to the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation to get it off the board. Um, and the original goal was and was and is to provide an opportunity for students to get support from teachers at any time during a school day. So in, in bef before the Achievement Center was created, you know, teachers and students could connect when they had a common free time or after school or before school. Um, but um, it's always had, it, actually peer tutors was not a part of the original vision, but it, it, it became a part of the services almost from the beginning. Um, I want to say that I completely agree with Nicoletta and Wynn Phillips that it is not the same particularly when it comes to writing conferences that English teachers do in the Achievement Center for students um, with draft um, papers that students have written. Um, that in, that per service in particular is, 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 I mean, students can, can look at the assignments and do some general suggestions and that sort of thing, but um, the teachers are particularly familiar with the assignments, the context of the assignments, uh, and that sort of thing. But, but peer tutoring has been a part of it from the very beginning, um, ever since it was, it was created. And, you know, there has always been, originally there was an English teacher in the Achievement Center every single period, and there was a math teacher in the Achievement Center just uh, two periods a day, or maybe even just one period. Um, the staffing has always fluctuated depending on what the demands are and what to teach the courses because because that's the first priority but this will be the the first and I hope only time when there is there are uh, this be the first and only time when there is um, either no English teacher or math teacher and it will certainly be the first time when there will be none of either um, so that is that is a big shift and I do not pretend to say that um, student tutoring help is the same. And that's, that is honestly what makes it a trade-off. 
because um, it isn't the same. Thank you, Jeff. Are there other comments or questions from members of the public? Michelle. Sorry, I couldn't help but <laughs> ask one more question. Um, so I am a member of CEIF and I was uh, worked with CEIF when this all came about with the Achievement Center and both my kids have really benefited from the Achievement Center. So I'm really um, saddened to hear that there won't be a math or English teacher. So is that a done deal or is that something you're still considering? It's um, I, I, it's possible that either in English or math, um, maybe there'll be an uh, English or math presence for a couple of periods. Um, it's just a matter of the numbers. Um, the first priority is is being able to have the staff to teach the classes that need to be taught. Um, the English department and the math department will do a more fine-tuned sort of um, micro look at the numbers than I have done. Um, I'm pretty familiar with the process and I, I have a, I'm pretty confident where we are, but it's possible that there'll be a tiny bit of leeway, but it would be tiny if there is any. And, um, you know, the, you know, looking back on my principalship, the Achievement Center, the existence of it is sort of one of the proudest things that I, if, I would say that's a point of huge pride um, for me personally, because I, um, I was not the person who made it what it is, but it was, I wrote the original grant for it with the support of a lot of other people. So it's not a decision that I come to lightly, but as I think about what the priorities are, um, and, and sometimes we, the budget forces some difficult decisions and some trade-offs, but I'm comfortable looking at it as a temporary thing that we will be able to get, get through it. Um, so that's my honest answer. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Michelle. I'd like to pause one more time for further comments or questions from the public. And I'm going to look at my other screen one more time and seeing none. Um, this concludes our series of budget workshops. We have had six and we have started out in um, the high school library learning commons and town hall and we've uh, ended in our homes, but we have done it. So good work to everybody. I'd like to thank everybody for their hard, thoughtful work on this endeavor. I also would like to thank all members of the public that participated at any point in this process. We value and need our public participation. The FY21 budget now moves to the April 14th business meeting agenda for adoption. And I want to thank everybody again and wish everybody well in this um, strange and difficult time. I hope everybody um, stays safe and stays healthy and um, I thank you for joining us here tonight and good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>